Hello dear students, respected teachers. Today I am presenting 10th standard social science geography, lesson number six. In this lesson number six, we study about water resources. The name of the lesson is India Water Resources. This lesson is taught to you in two parts. Today I am presenting part one, and tomorrow you will have part two. Now let us go to India water resources. In this chapter, you learn the following. The importance of water resources, major rivers of India, irrigation, its meaning and need of irrigation in India, types of irrigation and their distribution, multi-purpose rurally projects. All these are the contents you learn in this chapter. Dear students, keep this in mind. You may have one location in the map for the annual examination and even two or three marks of question in this chapter. So be ready to learn this. Let us know the importance of water resource. Water is one of the most precious natural resources. Can you think of life on this earth without water? No, we know that life came to this earth only because of water right so without water it is impossible to sustain life on this earth so water is the most essential component on this earth importance of water resource let us see human beings need it for drinking cooking washing agriculture generation of hydroelectricity industries navigation fishing etc because of this, water has gained the most important position in human life. Importance of water resource. India is endowed with substantial water resources. We have many rivers. We get sufficient rainfall and even underground water resource too. With this extensive water resource, life has become easier in this earth. Let us know the classification of water resource. Water resource can be divided into two. Number one, surface water resource. Number two, groundwater resource. Now, let us know the classification of water resource. The surface water and underground water are the two types of water resource. The surface water resource are rainfall, rivers, lakes, tanks, and springs. The underground water resource is nothing but well, either tube well or uh, open well. Let us know the major rivers of India, which is a you know, surface water resource. The rivers of India can be classified into two the rivers of North India and the rivers of South India. The rivers of North India are also known as Himalayan rivers and the rivers of South India are also known as Peninsula rivers. Now let us know about North Indian rivers, namely Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra. Now let us know first about River Indus. River Indus is also known as Sindhu. This Sindhu river rises near Mount Kailash. It is in Tibet, today it is occupied by China. So now it is in Chinese world. Initially, it flows northwestwards, then it flows towards southwest and enters Pakistan. Finally, it joins the Arabian Sea near Karachi. So it joins Arabian Sea near Karachi in Pakistan. Now I am showing you River Indus in this map of India. This map is also given in your textbook. You can refer them. See here in the left side, I have given you the complete map of India where main number of rivers are located. And in the right side map, I have just shown you in a bigger way the particular river Indus. River Indus rises here at Mount Kailash. You can see the left picture, small picture, and even an arrow mark red in color is shown you shown to you. Mount Kailash and River Indus enters Pakistan. Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi, Sutlej, Bees are their tributaries. 
the total red length of river indus is 2897 kilometers of which 2 not of which 709 kilometer lies in india so the major part of this river flows in pakistan as i said jhelum chenab bees ravi sutlej are the tributaries of river indus next let us move on to river ganga ganga river is the largest river of india its total length is about 2525 km and you know that it rises at gangotri glacier you have already studied it in the second lesson geography this is the map of river ganga i am showing you the two different maps one is the complete map of india other one is the river ganga where it flows along with tributaries river ganga flows towards south and southeast then it enters bangladesh it joins brahmaputra after it joining brahmaputra it continues in the name of padma river and finally flows into the bay of bengal its major tributaries are yamuna ghagra gandak ramaganga gomati sarada son and kosi among these yamuna is the longest tributary of river ganga the brahmaputra river rises near lake manasa sarovara it is in tibet today it is occupied by china and it flows towards the east now i am showing you river brahmaputra red color arrow mark is shown towards river brahmaputra this joins river ganga and continues to join bay of bengal the brahmaputra river rises and enters india through a narrow gorge in arunachal pradesh then it flows to the west and turns to the south in bangladesh it joins ganga and the total length of river brahmaputra is 2589 kilometers now let us know about rivers of south india many rivers flow across south india they are also called peninsular rivers most of them rises in the western ghat for example some of the rivers like krishna kaveri narmada right uh, tapi mahanadi godavari these are all called peninsular rivers among these godavari krishna kaveri they all take birth in western ghats now let us know one by one these peninsular rivers can be grouped into east flowing and west flowing rivers east flowing river join bay of bengal west flowing river joins arabian sea first of all we shall know about mahanadi river mahanadi river rises in sihawa range and flows towards the east the total length of flowing is 851 km and joins the bay of bengal see here i am showing you river mahanadi and with the red color arrow mark this is mahanadi sihawa range is the birthplace the east flowing river one more east flowing river godavari godavari is the longest river in south india i am showing you godavari in the red color map this godavari rises near triambak near Na in nasik district of maharashtra godavari rises near triambak flows towards east the total length of this river is 1465 km and joins bay of bengal now let us know about krishna river river krishna rises near mahabaleshwara then it flows towards the south east for 1400 km is the total length of river krishna finally it joins bay of bengal this is what the river krishna tungabhadra bhima koina ghataprabha malaprabha all these are the tributaries of river krishna krishna rises near mahabaleshwar bhima tungabhadra 
Koina, Gataprabha and Malaprabha, all these are the tributaries of river Krishna. Now let us know about Kaveri. Kaveri rises at Talakaveri in Kodagu district. It flows towards east and joins Bay of Bengal. I am showing you the river Kaveri in the map of India. River Kaveri has tributaries by name Hemavati, Shimsha, Kapila, Arkavati, Lakshmanatirtha, Suvarnavati and Bhavani. Here Narmada and Tapi are the important west flowing rivers. Let us know about them. River Narmada rises in Amarakantak hills and flows westward. The total length of kilometer, the flowing of this river is 1312 kilometer. It joins Arabian Sea through a narrow gorge called Marble Gorge. Next, the Tapi River. The Tapi River rises near Multai, flows towards westward. 724 kilometers is the total length. And finally, it joins Arabian Sea. Among the other important west flowing rivers, some of the important ones are Sabarmati, Mandovi, Zwari, Berti, Sharavati, Kali, Netravati, and the Periyar. Sabarmati, it flows in Gujarat, Mandovi, Zwari in Goa, Berti, Sharavati, Kali, Netravati are in Karnataka and Periyar in Kerala. Let us know about irrigation. The meaning of irrigation, the artificial supply of water for the purpose of agriculture is called irrigation. What is the importance of irrigation? Actually, irrigation refers to the supply of water to agricultural land from rivers, reservoirs, tanks or from underground resources. What is the need of you know, irrigation? India is an agricultural country. Therefore, it needs a regular and sufficient supply of water. Agriculture in India depends mainly on monsoons, monsoon rainfall. But unfortunate, this monsoon is seasonal, uncertain and unevenly distributed. Therefore, irrigation is needed. There are certain crops which require larger and regular water supply. For example, rice and sugarcane. Therefore, we require irrigation. That's what it has. Irrigation has become very important in agricultural activity. Let us know about types of irrigation. There are three types of irrigation. They are well irrigation, canal irrigation, and tank irrigation. Dear students, recently other types of irrigations such as sprinkler irrigation and drip irrigation are also added in this in this unit in this part one of the lesson you have learnt about importance of water resources major rivers of india irrigation its meaning and the importance these three topics you have learned the other topics namely well canal and uh, tank irrigations and their details you will study in the next class along with multi-purpose river valley projects. I wish you all the best. Thank you.